A basic axiom of astrology is that the microcosm is a replica of the macrocosm. A human being is a miniature solar system. Each planet represents specific functions and faculties within a person. A planet's condition and capacity to function is affected by sign placement, house placement, and aspects from other planets. A planet will influence the areas of life associated with the signs and houses it is located in and also the areas of life associated with other planets it forms aspects to. The sun is the king, father, boss, power, authority. It's about confidence, dignity, leadership, pride, identity, self-expression, career, vitality, will, fire, heat, heart. It rules Leo, it's exalted in Aries, and it falls in Libra. The moon is the queen, mother. It's about women caring to nurture, feeling, emotions, home, family, past, instinctive reactions, basic perceptions, mind or basic consciousness, subject or object, water, cool, moist, breasts, stomach, nourishment. It rules Cancer, exalted in Taurus, falls in Scorpio. Its complete zodiac cycle is approximately 28 days. Mercury, the messenger, child, youth, communicator, learning, education, intellect, analysis, curiosity, versatility, mobility, travel, variety, detail, information, data, news, Wit, de dexterity, skill, cleverness, mimic. Airy, winged god, arms, hands, fingers, little fingers, rules Gemini and Virgo, exalted in Virgo, and falls in Pisces. Venus, the goddess of love and beauty, relationship, social life, friendship, romance, marriage, harmony, art, balance, and proportion. Ease, grace, comfort, sensuality, affection, moist, rich, and fertile, Taurus, kidneys, bladder, sexual organs, rules Taurus and Libra, exalted in Pisces, and falls in Virgo. Mars, god of war, aggression, masculine, self-assertion, ego, drive, and desire. Action, athletic, will, force, conflict, courage, daring, impulsive, cutting, surgery, reckless, penetrating, hot, dry, muscular, system. Sexual organs, Scorpio, blood, rules, Aries, and Scorpio, exalted in Capricorn, falls in Cancer. Jupiter, mythological king of the gods. Largest planet, guru, religion, philosophy, knowledge, learning, and wisdom, morality, justice, law, faith, optimism, expansion, travel, inclusiveness, good fortune, abundance, realization, healing, bodily bulk, fat, liver, rules, Sagittarius, and Pisces, exalted in Cancer and Falls in Capricorn. Saturn, Saturn Kronos, God of Time, Grim Reaper, Old Age, Debility, Lethargy, Inertia, Fear, Loss, Death, Elders, Father, Structure, Form, Limitation, Duty, Career, Heights, Falls, Practicality, Agriculture, Mining, Patience, Discipline, Diligence, Dry, Cold, Airy, Skin, Bones, Teeth, Legs, Rules, Capricorn, and Aquarius, Exalted in Libra, Falls in Aries, Uranus, Mythological Sky, God, Astronomy, Astrology, Aviation, Science, Technology, Freedom, Experimentation, Progressive, Modern, Exciting, Unconventional, Rebellious, Volatile, Sudden, Shocking, Liberating, Neptune, 
God of the ocean. Emotional sensitivity, impressionability, surrender, spiritual vulnerability, poor boundaries, allergies, infections, weakness, victim savior, addictions, drugs, escapism, fantasy, art, compassion, sacrifice, selflessness, idealism, disillusionment, confusion. Associated with Pisces in modern Western astrology. Pluto, mythological god of the underworld, primal energies and processes, ruthlessness, wielding power, coercion, control, death, rebirth, transformation, regeneration, healing, purpose, focus, intensity, obsessive, transpersonal, messianic, fanatical. The astrological chart is actually a representation of our solar system at any given moment in time and also how the earth is placed at the center of the chart. Now we are going to learn about houses and how they add to a chart overall meaning. Houses act as a framework which help define the individual nature of each chart. Houses are vital to chart analysis, contributing about 50% to a chart's meaning. In this view of the heavens, we are looking down at the north pole of the earth as it rotates within the context of the zodiac signs. You can see that the zodiac signs constitute a relatively fixed backdrop through which all orbiting bodies move. Early astrologers recognized that a person's geographic location on the earth must be taken into account. To do this, they devised a system of houses. According to the house system, the point in the heavens directly above an individual is known as the midheaven, indicated by the letters MC, from the Latin medium chaley, meaning middle of the heavens. The point at the eastern horizon is called the ascendant because it is the point which is rising or ascending from the horizon as the earth turns. From these two points are extrapolated the rest of the houses numbering 1 through 12. Just as there are 12 zodiac signs, there are also 12 houses. The meanings contained in the houses are very similar to those contained in the zodiac signs. The first zodiac signs, Aries, for instance, conveys individuality, originality, self-awareness, and boldness. The first house conveys approximately the same meaning. The second house corresponds to the second zodiac sign, Taurus, conveying security, consciousness, adherence to a value system, and a craving for stability. The third house corresponds to the third zodiac sign, Gemini, which imparts communication, skills, talkativeness, and adaptability. The pattern continues through the rest of the signs and houses. The main difference between houses and signs is that houses move with the earth while the zodiac signs do not. As the earth rotates on its axis, it changes. The position of the houses in the relation to the zodiac signs underneath the houses can be thought of as a personalized version of the zodiac, which is superimposed over the actual zodiac. The two systems overlap one another, creating an ever-changing kaleidoscope of endless con combinations. Houses bring a personalized dimension to the birth chart, making each chart totally unique. The placement of the houses depends on the time of day an event occurs. If this were a natal chart, for example, we would take a freeze frame of the heavens at the time of birth. In our example, this individual's midheaven is Sagittarius and the ascendant is Pisces because a chart can occur at any point in a 24-hour period. A house will often include portions of two zodiac signs. This individual's 11th house, for example, contains a portion of the sign Capricorn and a portion of the sign Aquarius. Houses 1 through 6 are the personal houses. Houses 7 through 12 are the collective houses. Houses 1, 2, and 3 is about self-development. 4, 5, and 6 is about self-expression. Houses 7, 8, and 9 is about self-expansion. And 10, 11, 12 are about self-transcendence. The first house is in Aries, which is about self-awareness, viewpoint, personality, physical energy, independence, self-confidence, assertiveness, appearance, approach to life, aspirations, 
physical body, and new beginnings. The second house is in Taurus, which is about self-reliance, affluence, resources, finances, wealth, talents, values, self-worth, possession, material values, sensual, and pleasures. The third house is in Gemini. It's about communication, rational mind, intelligence, thoughts, ideas, writing, environment, siblings, and neighbors. The fourth house is in Cancer. It's about feelings, nurturing others, affection, emotional security, home and family, past, land, traditions, and privacy. The fifth house is in Leo, and it's about self-expression, passion, creativity, playing, romance, pleasure, fun, excitement, children, art, entertainment, and startups. The sixth house is in Virgo, and it's about self-improvement, crafts, environment, service, helping others improve, habits, charity, routine, work, health, diet, and skills. The seventh house is in Libra, relationships, marriage, agreements, justice, balance, harmony, fairness, and one-on-one -on -one relationships, cooperation, legal matters, business, and agreements. The eighth house is in Scorpio, and it's about healing, regeneration, what is hidden, the depth of life, acceptance, deep connections, others' resources, endings, and beginnings. The ninth house is in Sagittarius, exploring, purpose, adventure, optimism, freedom, wisdom, teaching, open-minded, philosophy, higher learning, travel, gurus, publishing, and broadcasting. The tenth house is in Capricorn, and it's about legacy, life's work, public life, commitment, determination, dedication, responsibility, mastery, maturity, discipline, career, public image, achievements, authorities, and expertise. The eleventh house is in Aquarius, and it's about groups, community, causes, contribution, ideals, visions, aspirations, friends, networks, values, and organizations. And the twelfth house is in Pisces, and it's about inner peace, connectedness, intuition, presence, mindfulness, faith, empathy, compassion, connection with God, meditation, dreams, isolation, spirituality, unresolved issues, and psychic abilities. The first house is I am, awareness of self, appearance, outward personality. The second house is I have, personal resources, money, possessions, values, skills. The third house is I think, immediate environment, mental activity, learning, siblings, communication. The fourth house is I nurture, inner world, home, parents, roots, inner security. The fifth house is I serve, personal creativity, romance, children, fun, creativity. The sixth house is I serve, daily life, work, health, service, self-improvement. The seventh house is I partner, awareness of others, marriage, and other partnerships. The eighth house, house is I circulate, shared resources, sex, death, letting go, regeneration, other people's money sharing. The ninth house is I explore, expanded horizons, higher education, philosophy, publishing, religion, travel, law. The tenth house is I achieve, outer world, career, status, reputation, vocational purpose, taking power. The eleventh house is I aspire, group contribution, friends, groups, goals, aspirations. The twelfth house is I dream, spiritual life, solitude, institutions, transcendence, and self-sabotage. Zodiac is a circle, and like other circles, there are 360 degrees. In that circle, the 12 signs of the zodiac are a division of that 360-degree circle and a specific level of accuracy. Now, the groupings of the signs, this is the most important aspect of this course, because the groupings of the signs enable us to spot some of the most important geometric connections between planets in a birth chart quite quickly. 
though if we know these groupings very well, we can easily work with the aspects. So any amount of effort you put into familiarizing yourself with these groupings will be very valuable. It will make working with aspects, which is a really important part of a strategy, a lot easier. So the first grouping, and probably the most well-known one, is the division of the 12 signs into the four elements, fire, earth, air, and water. The fire signs are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. And you know fire signs are supposed to be quite energetic. Fire as an element represents a type of spontaneity. Fire is lively. It's, it represents an enthusiastic quality and it could be described as emotional but not in a sense of being sensitive and emotion more like being passionate, perhaps inspired, enthused. So fire is a very free element. There is a lot of honesty and authenticity in fire. It's just a very open and direct fire. It doesn't conceal things and actually, if anything, reveals them. It creates light. The earth signs are Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and the earth element, as one would assume is associated with things that are practical things that are quite concrete. And the earth element is very solid very gradual. It can provide a foundation, but it can also represent some inertia. The air signs are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And the air element is typically associated with communication. So that air element also is associated with a mental focus or a mental way of doing things. So there's a strong social and communicative quality to the air element. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, these are the water signs. And water is associated with sensitivity, with feeling you would call emotion except that it's not usually the type of lively fiery emotion it's more but sensitivity and receptivity the earth and the water signs are drawn here in green which is a cool color to feminine quality that the earth and water signs are feminine whereas the fire and air signs are masculine so the earth signs tend to be relatively more introverted and the fire and air signs are more open and active all right now you can see that the signs are divided into masculine and feminine. You can see how this forms two hexagons. Here is an overview of the major aspects, starting with conjunction, which means that there are two planets in the same sign, zero degrees. So that's this up here, this sign on top. And the next one is opposition, which means that they're directly opposite from one another. Two planets are directly opposite, 180 degrees. In separations so that's this one here on top directly opposite is here in the bottom which is 180 degrees the next one is square so it's the same modality but not in opposition so that's 90 degrees so here's a square and it's in 90 degrees apart from the one on top here this symbol on top of that specific planet the next one is the trine and that means that the planets are within the same elements when they're 120 degrees apart from one another. So here's a trine, and it's 120 degrees apart from this planet on top. And the next one is a sextile. So that's the sil similar element, but not in opposition. So they're 60 degrees apart from one another. They're 60 degrees. So that's this one here, the sextile, with the top planet here. This is what they mean. Conjunction, zero degrees of separation, and their merging and blending of energies. Sextile is 60 degrees of separation. A cheer, leading, creating opportunity. The square is 90 degrees separation. Challenging, the energies work at cross purposes. Trying, 120 degrees of separations. Well, that's about flow, easy agreement, and communications. The quincunx, 150 degrees of separation, is the energies require constant adjustment. And opposition is 180 degrees of separation. There is a tug of war that needs some give and take. And now we're going to talk about cardinal, fixed, and mutable signs. Zodiac sign qualities refer to the different stages in the year's seasonal cycle. Cardinal zodiac signs start a season, fixed zodiac signs embody each season fully, and mutable zodiac signs conclude each season and help to transition us into the next one. Patterns in a horoscope. Each of the 12 signs is categorized not only by element but also by quality. 
respectively name the cardinal, fixed, immutable, or common qualities. In the individual horoscope, the placement of planets in cardinal, fixed, or mutable signs also reveals basic traits of the personality. This gives us, gives us 12 quite different basic types. These varying qualities provide the backdrop to the planetary positions. As each horoscope has different planets in different signs, there can never be a pure Aries or a pure Gemini. Each horoscope is a highly individual. Each horoscope is a highly individual, very complex, and usually also very varied combination of parts. And this is how it looks like when it's separated by elements, cardinal, fixed, and mutable signs. So for the fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Aries is a cardinal sign, Leo is a fixed sign, Sagittarius, mutable. For the earth signs, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn is cardinal, Taurus, fixed, Virgo, mutable. For the air signs, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Cardinal, Aquarius, Fixed, Gemini, Mutable. Water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer is Cardinal, Scorpio is Fixed, Pisces, Mutable. So again, Cardinal is the beginning of the season, Fixed is the middle season, and Mutable is towards the end of the season, and it's divided by each of the elements. So Cardinal is basically saying, hey, let's start something. I have an idea for a business. Mutable is basically saying, ugh, here we go again, gathers information, processes it, and organizes the chaos. And fixed science finds a groove and seeks to build a foundation and a legacy with staying power. And this is how it looks like for the cardinal squares, mutable squares, and fixed squares. Cardinal squares being Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. Mutable squares, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces. And fixed squares, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius.